Ladies and gentlemen, today was a wonderful day, a fantastic day in the history of space exploration with Perseverance landing on Mars. And of course, uh, you, can, you better believe that nobody on the planet will remember that President Trump, it was, it was Perseverance launched on July 30th, 2020. So here's Mars, uh, NASA, mars.nasa.gov, Mars 2020 mission, Perseverance rover launch. The Perseverance rover is now on its way to Mars. It launched on July 30th, 2020 at 4.50 a.m. Um, a Pacific, uh, Pacific time, 7.50 a.m. Eastern. Gee, who was president on July 30th, 2020? I wonder. I wonder. Perseverance launched on Atlas V541 uh, rocket. On an Atlas V-541 rocket from Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, the Atlas V V is one of the largest rockets available for interplanetary flight. This is the same type of rocket that launched the InSight and Curiosity to Mars. Launch vehicle was provided by United Launch Alliance, Centennial, Colorado. Okay, so... Hit subscribe to this channel. By the way, thank you so much for your support and your kind words and getting uh, my segments going. Uh, I had a live stream today at 6 p.m. Pacific. I'm going to try to do live streams at around 6 or 7 p.m. Pacific from now on. We hit, we were over 500 viewers, and this is the second day I've done a lot, the second day that I've done a live stream in months. So it was fantastic. And I kind of got burned out, uh, you know, just got tired of doing them, but I missed them, and I had a fantastic time during the live stream. It was really great. So uh, tomorrow at around 6 p.m., definitely be there, 6 p.m. Pacific, be there tomorrow for the live stream. Uh, If you want to read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post, Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Federalist, The Roanoke Times, other publications, go to hagoodman.com. To my... To my um, uh, Patreon, thank you. To my Patreon members, thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it is a great day. Let's get to... uh, So, this is Space.com. Trump hails Mars as NASA's next target. Says the moon's not so exciting. (laughs) So, about a year ago, President Donald Trump on Friday hailed the tremendous work by U.S. space programs to return astronauts to the moon by 2024. But the ultimate goal is Mars, Trump said. Well, we just uh, landed Perseverance on Mars. And so we're going to Mars, Trump told reporters at the White House meeting with Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Mars, Trump added, is a more exciting target than the moon. We're stopping at the moon. The moon is actually a launching pad, Trump said. That's why we're stopping at the moon. I said, hey, we've done the moon. That's not so exciting. (laughs) So we'll be doing... so we'll be doing the moon, but we'll really be doing Mars. And so, ladies and gentlemen, today was pretty awesome. CNBC, NASA lands Perseverance rover on the Mars surface carrying the first helicopter for another planet, February 18th, 2021. And so interestingly enough, nobody... I mean, this is really President Trump's. I mean, if you want to, if you want to talk about accomplishments, of course, the program, the Perseverance program, uh, was years and years and years in the making. But a Democratic administration would have taken credit. It launched during President Trump's administration. Democrats have tried to turn Trump into this monster. This ogre, this buffoon that can't get anything right. Well, a lot of great things took place. A lot of accomplishments. Um, This was what, like I said, in July of 2019, or 2020, sorry, he was president. But here, today, NASA lands Perseverance rover on on the Mars surface carrying the first helicopter for another planet. Key points, NASA successfully landed its fifth robotic rover on Mars on Thursday, 
with the U.S. Space Agency confirming that Perseverance touched down safely on the Red Planet's surface. The rover is the most technologically advanced robot NASA has ever sent to Mars. The agency aims to spend nearly two years using it to explore the surface. Perseverance is also carrying a small helicopter named Ingenuity, which NASA plans to use to attempt the first flight on another planet. So it's pretty cool. NASA successfully landed its fifth robotic rover, Perseverance, on the surface of Mars on Thursday after, after its six months after its six-month voyage from Earth. Like I said, President Trump, this is a tremendous accomplishment for the country, and it's it's I don't know if I don't know if Biden is taking credit for it, but you can you can kind of see that. The fact that it's landed during Biden's administration, they're kind of, they're kind of trying to take uh, credit. I, I don't think anyone's putting two and two together and saying, "Yeah, this, the the uh, journey began during President Trump's administration." They were working on this all throughout President Trump's administration. Okay, um, and he talked about going to Mars again eventually. Based on its pre- predecessor, Curiosity, which which reached March, a retreat with which reached Mars in August 2012, and is still in operation. The Perseverance rover was built by NASA's JPL in California. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great, it's 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 history in the making. It's a great thing. I want to read you this though. In 2017. Uh, NASA.gov new space policy directive calls for human expansion across solar system. So this is President Donald Trump, like when he first became his first year's president. President Donald Trump is sending astronauts back to the moon. The president Monday signed the White House Space Policy Directive 1, a change in national space policy that provides for a U.S.-led integrated program with a private with with private sector partners for a human return to the moon, followed by missions to Mars and beyond. So he might have, he might have helped NASA. Uh, I I don't know if he, I don't know if I could say categorically that he helped with his emphasis on a private, um, private sector, private sector partners. If you have knowledge on the space program and you think that did help, you know, give me your thoughts below in the comments section. The policy calls for the NASA administrator, NASA administrator, to lead an innovative and sub, uh, sustainable program of exploration with commercial and international partners to enable human expansion across the solar system and bring back to Earth new knowledge and opportunities. The effort will more effectively organize government, private industry, and international efforts towards returning humans on the on the moon, and will lay the foundation that will eventually enable human exploration of Mars. Quote, the directive I am signing today will, will, ref, will refocus America's space program on human exploration and discovery. It, it marks the first step in returning American astronauts to the moon for the first time since 1972, the long-term exploration for long-term exploration and use. This time, we will not only uh, plant our flag and leave our footprints, we will establish a foundation for an eventual mission to Mars and perhaps someday to many worlds beyond. And, quote, under President Trump's, Donald Trump, uh, President Trump's leadership, America will lead uh, in space once again on all fronts, said Vice President Pence. Uh, as the president has said, space is the next gen- next next great American frontier, and it is our duty and our destiny to settle that frontier with American leadership, courage, and values. The signing of this new directive is yet another promise kept by President Trump. So, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, pretty awesome. Um, I think that, like I said, it it's another example of an accomplishment in President Trump's administration. Landed during Biden's administration, but it was launched during Trump's administration. This gets to another issue that this gets to an obstacle that I'm very like 
I don't want to say passionate about, but passionate about overcoming. President Trump should focus in the next four years. Hopefully he runs again in 2024. And in 2022, the House will be Republican. Hopefully the Senate will be Republican also. But it'll be Trump Republican. It'll be a populist political party that is against regime change and interventions and military quagmires and the Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld Lincoln Project absolute catastrophe that we see going on right now. But how many people know that Perseverance was launched during President Trump's administration? Okay, not many. I don't think I don't think people are even putting two and two together. And if they do, they say, "Well, you know what? No, it was he had nothing to do with it. Nash, it would have it would have launched during any administration. Yeah, but Trump was supposed to be the worst president of all time. Everything he touched was supposed to be oh my god, my god, horrendous. And he did begin Space Force and uh, set set a new space policy directive, calling for human expansion across the solar system. So in terms, of, in terms of space and NASA, or at least space exploration, I should say, uh, Trump was, he, he accomplished a great deal, or he accomplished more than most other presidents. Or I should say, I shouldn't say that. He, it was one of his accomplishments. And so what I think, should happen in the next four years is that President Trump should highlight, should focus on communicating his achievements. Not many people really know or ca- like they, they don't they don't really know the historical significance of the Abraham Accords or President Trump stepping foot in North Korea. There needs to be a greater understanding or greater appreciation of things that he was able to accomplish. Too much of President Trump's presidency has been this temper tantrum from journalists that became activists. Without journalists that literally just became, in many cases, you know, extensions of the Democratic Party, or without Twitter being pretty much dominated by um, by a bias towards Democrats, without Hollywood and MSNBC and CNN and the New York Times, the Washington Post, obsessing like these, you had people and the Lincoln Project that got ninety million dollars simply for spewing contempt against Trump. You had these people every single second of every day. Le- leveling this temper tantrum at President Trump, like nothing he did, and and in, in some ways he fed, he gave them exactly what they wanted with the tweets. If tomorrow Twitter says, you know what, we're un- we're not banning, here's here's your Twitter account again. President Trump should not, absolutely not, open up or utilize the account. Because you look at what's taking place. He hasn't been on Twitter, and Democrats are pretty much imploding. They, he was acquitted. A deputy press secretary for, was forced to resign. Now you have Andrew Cuomo uh, under federal investigation, FBI, uh, and state investigation. Then you had the Lincoln Project completely implode. And the best thing President Trump should do should ju- is just kind of remove himself, not, not in terms of political influence because he's already taken over the GOP, but remove himself from the public relations madness. You know, Twitter was good for him to, be, to get into the White House. It wasn't so good while he was in the White House. He fell for a trap the last couple of years of his presidency. And so there were so many accomplishments that took place. We had record low unemployment for most of his tenure. Then the pandemic hit, and I mean, the first couple of months, polls showed that people were supporting President Trump. And then what happened because of Twitter, because of the the nonstop negative media coverage, 
and you see that media coverage has completely changed and, and like the temper tantrum stopped they got what they wanted so now everything even facebook now is like you know we're going to do away with political ads we're not going to have as many political ads yeah i wonder why that's interesting um you have a, the the white house press corps is like this calm docile classroom before with f- four years of president trump it was like you know the uh the substitute teacher and the and the you know the, the class was going wild and every day it was like performance art they tried to just you know insult and demean trump to his face whereas Whatever, you know, the lies that are told by Biden or his, or his press secretary, you know, no, they're not going after them because they got what they wanted. They're happy now. And this dynamic needs to be addressed. This is an obstacle that needs to be addressed. And like I said, you can't do it. If you want to not see Nikki Haley or if you want to write the letter to McConnell, that's good for the short term. Long term, you got to meet with these people and speak to these people, and you got to give Republicans on the fence an incentive to back uh, to, to defend President Trump um, and and continue what he started in 2022. Devin Nunes, Matt Gates, Jim Jordan, uh, people like Ron DeSantis and Rick, uh, Richard Grinnell—they're going to run the Republican Party. President Trump has already taken control of the Republican Party. But he can't just say, well, look, the people are on my side. He has to give them, he has to, he has to I think, communicate to the country and especially to other Republicans the benefits of, of, of backing him against a media onslaught. But if he's able to do that, his accomplishments like Perseverance... I mean, it took place under his administration. It's not like he can't sing. He can't say single-handedly that oh, it's because of me that this happened. But it's still something. It's still a good. It's a good. It's a good accomplishment. It's something that was successful. That should be championed. People should realize that perseverance was launched during President Trump's administration, while everyone was blaming him for the end of the world. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. Be here tomorrow at around 6 or 7 p.m., probably 6 p.m. Pacific for the live stream. And uh, tremendous day today in terms of landing on Mars with the, with the rover and then the helicopter. That's fantastic. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe to this channel. And thank you so very much for getting the segments going again, especially for all the love during the, um, during the uh, live stream. And ladies and gentlemen, Give a lot of love to Black Conservative Patriot. There have been so many people, so many channels. Um, we'll, we'll check his, his profile. Uh, I don't have Twitter. I don't have Facebook. But he explained what was going on on Twitter. Give a lot of love to Black Conservative Patriot. He's awesome. Thanks, lady. Thanks everybody.